Hello, everybody. Sorry, I was running a little late. I had everything laid out except for one pearl strand, and I couldn't find it. But at the last minute, I did. So I apologize for being so tardy. Um, today, oh, sorry, sorry. That plus restart plus, but here I am. So I appreciate your patience today. A little bit of coffee, and we're going to get started. Um, so today we're going to talk about pearls, pearls and leather. And as you know, we love pearls and leather around here at beadshop.com. Uh, we also know that you folks love pearls and leather out there designing with it. So I'm going to do some super simple stuff today with just pearls and leather and a very few other accoutrements. Okay. So we're going to uh, play around with that. So let me uh, share with you, Drea, bless her, uh, shared some really cool um, samples with me yesterday that she had found combing, combing the World Wide Web uh, on a very famous catalog that's named after a film, uh, a film festival. I think you all know what that is. Um, but you know, that look that those catalogs have, they're really stunning, really classic, and super, super easy to make, right? So uh, let me start off. Uh, hang on. I was practicing this earlier. Look, look how I can put myself in the corner here. Look at that. That's new. And I got a new background. That's also what I've been working on this morning. <laughs> Always something. So before we get started with that, my friends, let me just tell you, don't forget to, you can find us all over the web, right? You can hit that like and subscribe button on uh, our YouTube channel. Um, watch those replays. Uh, if you're watching on a replay, welcome. It's great to have you here. Join us over on Facebook on our page, The Bead Table, Instagram, Pinterest. We're everywhere on the World Wide Web at beadshop.com. Questions? Uh, go ahead and there it is. Shoot us an email down at info at beadshop.com. I also want to give a plug, my friends. Uh, the France Bead Retreat uh, is in full swing um, there are only a couple of spots left. So if you want to come to France with me, May 30th through June 6th of 2024, uh, you can join me on a bead adventure. It's going to be super fun. I promise you it's going to be great. Uh, a big thank you and shout out to Becky Nunn who wrote about it on her blog. Thank you. Thank you, Becky, for doing that. It's awesome. And a big thank you to Jen Cushman of Soul Stirring Retreats for hosting me. There's also, friends, there's going to be uh, some uh, info on our bead shop retreat coming up in San Juan Batista. To California in August. We have a new special guest instructor that I know you folks are going to love. So stay tuned. We're going to announce that pretty close after the Tucson trip sometime in February. Uh, you'll know and signups will start for that. All right. So let me start, friends, this kind of slideshow of samples um, that I've got here. Okay. And I love this. <laughs> Nobody puts Kate in the corner. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. That's awesome. Um, I'll put myself in the corner for today. Um, so here is this piece. Super simple, right? Super easy. Uh, just a bead. This, In this case, it's turquoise bead on some leather, maybe one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, and that's it, right? In Tucson, I'm going to be looking for some large hold items that are beyond the pearls, right? We know that we love the large hold pearls. But when I saw this piece, I'm like, you know what? I need some semi uh that has some large holes. So this is great. We're going to talk about that knot. You've seen me do it before, but we're going to go over it. Let me show you this one's next. Look at this stunner of a pearl strand, right? It's a twist on a classic pearl strand. Um, pearls, instead of knotted on silk, you could knot them on Irish wax linen, or in this case, leather. I've got some leather here. We're going to do some knotting with the leather. I think you're going to like it. You've seen, again, you've seen me do this, but 
I want to bring these all together in a collection for you. Um, that clasp is just a simple clasp. I'm going to use the toggle, um, the, the lobster claw, the swivel uh, lobster claw. You could also use a toggle, which I have sitting here, either or. That one is closed with a crimp tube, a large crimp tube, like a three millimeter for leather. I'm going to use the tried and true method from Bead Shop. We're going to use a silk wrap instead. I don't mind that metal, that double metal there, but I think the silk wrap adds a little more of a rustic boho finish look than that crimp. Okay. Uh, let me see if you have any comments so far, and then I'll change the slide. Um, we do, Bonnie, we just launched some large hold pearls. So I'm going to show you those in just a second. But yes, thank you so much for asking. We do. Um, let me see. Uh, okay. Let me go back to this. Um, the next one I've got here, this is on a suede lace, which my friends is coming back. Uh, our supplier discontinued it and maybe they saw that it is super popular still. So we're getting the compassion suede back in. I know that a lot of you have asked for it. So stay tuned for that. Um, can you see on that compassion suede, the little stitching, those little tiny, those would be Charlotte's size 13s or size 15s and just stitched on that cord. Isn't that just beautiful? You can also cut your own ultra suede, like you've seen me do in the past with my rotary cutter and use that and stitch some beads on. But we've been doing, um, you know, the bead embroidery and everything. Uh, so recently this is just bead embroidery, but on a skinnier uh, suede lace. You can also see there's some more um, large hold beads that are there and then some charms. You know, if you haven't looked lately, we launched these kite briolettes. Um, and I'm going to see if I can find them to, to show you because I was thinking about it as I was just going on the air. Our kite briolettes are such a beautiful stone. I'll jump on over to our website and show you those. They're great for wire wrapping. They're a smooth briolette rather than a facet. We also carry those little briolettes that are bezeled around the side. You can use one of those great nun design rings that we have. And this is a classic, classic look, which I love. The closure of that necklace looks like it's just a couple of jump rings that fit on there tightly. So you would have to experiment with different rings that you have in your collection. You can also, we have a ton of jump rings. You could even use a soldered ring from a piece of chain or whatever and slide it on and see how it fits. Does it keep that leather closed up, right? Here's another one. I'm going to put this on and let me check the comments. Let me check the comments. Oh, Andy, that's great. You know, Heather over at Humble Beads, um, she uses a crimp cover to crimp leather. Um, that's actually a great idea. I was just actually, we were all texting during Great Bead Extravaganza. I just adore Heather from Humble Beads, her little precious birds and gosh, all those things. Isn't she just, she's the bee's knees. And that is a great great tip. Maybe I'll try and find one here and let's see if it works. Um, for me anyway, I'm sure it works for Heather because she's super skilled. Um, let's take a look at this one. So this is more of that leather. Um, Janice is saying she hopes that we'll have the faux suede lacing back by March. Uh, so keep an eye out for it. And, uh, I'm so glad that you have some large hold semi precious. So it's good inspiration for you. Awesome. That's great. This is also a way to mix small beads or beads that have a smaller hole. And I've got some here. We're going to look at how we might make this as well. Smaller hold beads, mixing them and adding them to the suede lace. Those turquoise drops, I mean, to find turquoise with a large hole drill. I mean, that's rarer than a, I don't know. I don't even know what's rare anymore, right? But but I was going to say, I don't even know. <laughs> but it's rare to find those because when you drill, turquoise, really good quality turquoise is getting harder and harder to find. And 
turquoise usually is sold by weight on the wholesale level. So uh, stone cutters and stone dealers, um, they don't want uh, to waste any of that material, right? So uh, they're very rarely with large holes. But something like this, you can see there's some little drops or something there on the bottom. And then there's probably a wire or a thread or something in there that's coming back through um, and around that um, that suede lace through the loop. That one also, I love the way that one's done is that suede lace cord or leather cord is probably about 40 inches, 42 inches, I'm guessing. <clears throat> that little center, can you see that drop in the center? That drop in the center could be worn in the front like this, like a scarf right here and then it comes around and then the, the 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 bottom of the lariat is coming down so that's meant to kind of wrap around have that and those i think are silver beads that are on there large hold beads um wrap around and then have just the tails hang or just kind of flip over in just a little overhand knot right like that i i love 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 that uh, let me show you this next one. This is a great closure and I'm going to talk about closures because I know a lot of you folks have questions about how closures, uh, go. This is a, um, a, uh, what do I want to say? A swivel clasp on there and the swivel is knotted to the leather. Um, so you could silk wrap that or you could knot it. I'm going to show you how to do that knot. And also take a look at that chain, right? There's just a little length of chain um, that you can make this, um, you know, convertible or adjustable for that. Okay. So we're going to look at that as well. Uh, let me show you the, the, the front side. Whoops. Sorry. Wrong one. There we go. No. Nope. Sorry. There we are. It wasn't cooperating. This again is just some simple, this is Hill Tribe silver and probably Vermeil over silver beads. Um, and again, that's just that simple overhand knot uh, that is knotted around that bead. And then those beads are coming around it again. Um, again, anything that's a larger hole, I think fits just beautifully in that. And here's a shot of that completed necklace. And I wanted to show you that adjustable knot, that slider knot. I'm going to show you that today as well. Okay. Because, um, I've shown it to you before, but it's always a handy, handy thing to be able to recreate. And then of course, at this very end, this classic earring again with Hill Tribe, I'm going to make these with just the pearls. But again, super simple. Do you remember that Travis earring I made a while back with the, the seed beads that were wound around the leather? This is really the same thing, except we're using Hill Tribe Silver. Okay. Uh, and in my case, Hill Tribe Silver here in the photo, in my case, I'm going to use pearls. All right. Let me um, take that out. There we go. Let me put myself back in the middle here. I like this new layout I've been playing around. Can you tell? It's always dangerous when I play around with the, the but I like this new background. It's a little lighter, a little happier, I think. Uh, okay. So here are the pearls uh, that we're going to look at. And let's take a look. Andy's asking, is that a barrel knot? So yeah. So Kelly over at Kelly's Bead Boutique, she is the barrel knot queen, right? She's incorporates barrel knots and everything she does. Uh, not everything, but a lot of things she does. This is really simple. I call this a double overhand. Um, I'm going to show you how I do that double overhand to create that same kind of barrel knot, but I don't use a tool or a tube or anything like that. So it's very, very similar. Andy, we can call it a barrel knot. We can call it a double overhand, you know, whatever, um, whatever. And Margaret reminds me of the Sundance catalogs. Very astute, very astute there, my friend. <laughs> so a big thanks to Drea for doing a little uh, R&D for me for this, um, 
for this uh, broadcast. Thank goodness. Now, um, Sharon's saying, I've got a bunch of unfinished pieces because I'm intimidated by closures. Silly, I know. Not silly, A. B, I'm going to take care of that intimidation today. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Okay. Um, all right. Let me get rid of this comment. Let me, uh, whoops, sorry. Let me solo this and let's take a look. Okay. Let me get it here. Let me zoom out and let's take a look at what we've got there. Sorry, my coffee's in the way. I still have this, um, this mat down here from my from my live broadcast. I'm kind of liking it. Maybe I can find a mat that's not green. I like the grid. I know that some of you might think it's a little busy, but I think it might be interesting for you folks to see um, the, the scale and size of things. Each of these grids, just so you know, is an inch. Okay, like this, uh, an inch across and an inch up. So it's a one inch square. So if I were to put this pearl right in here, you could see about that size. Okay, it just gives you kind of an idea uh, of the size of the pearl as well. Okay, so uh, these are the large hold pearls um, that we just launched yesterday. We've got, we launched a couple of different types of pearls or colors of pearls. These silver ones, which I think are just gorgeous, gorgeous right here, right? And then we also had these kind of peacock colored ones. Now these silver ones are a little, I don't want to say rough, but they're a little rustic, right? They aren't the perfect pearl. For the price of these beads, however, I think that they are um, a really great retail price um, and it's on the website. I don't want to get it wrong, but I'll, I'll click over there and we can see it. Um, they're a large beefy bead um, and they're all very different on the strand. Um, you can see that some have the straightations on the back, right? Smooth on the front. Some kind of are pointy-ish like this. So they're not meant to be like super high quality. They're meant to be a little more of a, um, of a, of a rough cut pearl like this. Oh, and thank you, Drea, for coming in. These run uh, $18.95 before any discounts or uh, VIB rewards. Okay. Janice found these and sent these over. Um, and I just fell in love with them. I love them. We may or may not be able to get these back in. So I suggest if you love them and you want them, uh, we have a pretty good supply of them, but I know what happens with these shows. You folks go, oh my gosh, I love these. And then you buy them and then we're out. So, uh, but we'll have more large hold pearls. Don't worry. But um, these may, uh, may not come back in. Something maybe similar. Hopefully will. Um, so let me measure these for you. As I said, they all vary in size. This one here is just under 12 millimeter and then side to side, just under 10. Whole size on these are gigantor, 2.4. Can you see that there? Big, really big holes in these. Let me measure this one. This one's a little flatter, 12 and a half millimeters by about 8.3. So they do vary in size. Okay. And so JP, these are both, uh, these are both eight inch strands, just an FYI. Um, and if it says that in the, um, in the description, we need to make sure it says eight inches because these are both eight inch strands with the large hole pearls. Uh, let me show you these here. I'm going to cut these. These are the smaller ones, which I also love. Again, a nice large hole here. Can you see? I mean, a really large hole like so. And 
again, 2.4, nicely drilled, clean around the edges of the hole, right? Um, not really chipped out or anything. You can see, see how there's the bead itself is a little rough, but, um, but the holes are really good, uh, really good quality around the holes. Okay, great. Thanks, Drea. They both say eight inch. Great. I just wanted to make sure, of course, we got it right, which is great. Can you see these are a little smaller? Let me lay this out and show you what I have per inch. I kind of like using this grid. Um, so I have it here. I don't know, might, again, might be distracting, but it's about four beads per inch, right? Like this. Um, so there, and let me compare it with this one. These are about two beads per inch or thereabouts. Okay, so there's the difference. All right, let me show you. So this is good. So Lorena has a comment that I like a lot. Lorena says, it's the same situation here. I have many unfinished projects, plus I want to try others. I just can't keep up with them and I get overwhelmed. You know, my friend, I do too. No surprise, because I know a lot of you are waiting for projects that need to be finished. It's the bane of my existence. But it is easy to get overwhelmed. Um, and I think as creatives, we get super excited about things, right? Like, oh, I want to make this and oh, I'm going to make this now, right? It's like we're distracted by the next shiny thing. What I've done uh, for all of my bead shop projects and things and things that I have to finish, I have, I have a little, a little, I don't know, a little rolling cart that has shelves on it. And I have my, um, my finished pieces all on those. And it, it helps, right, to have them um, just in all in one place. So at least I can see them, right, and know that they're all there so I don't have to find them when I'm looking for them. Um, that helps me a little, <laughs> right? I also put them in baggies so I can find and recall the baggies that I need. Um, so all of the stuff, all of the loose beads, all of the extras, all of that kind of stuff are also in baggies. So that, that helps. I'm glad that I'm not alone in that. And Julie, <laughs> you're sticking with me. You feel behind, right? Christine has some good words <clears throat> about that, that our unfinished projects, they wait very patiently until you get to them. It exact, it's exactly true, though. I know that you folks are always very, very patient. Uh, but I eventually finish things up, even if it's quite a while afterwards. Um, this is also a good one here too, Julie. You put projects in baggies, but now you also print out the project so you remember what it's for. That's a really great tip as well. Okay. So I'm going to put some of these little things up here in my space. Um, I got some of the kite briolettes out as well. Let me uh, zoom in on these for you so you can see them. I love these kites. We sell them by the strand. Um, and we launch them and we still have them. I haven't used them much, right? But I sure, I, I love them. They're uh, just a smooth, beautiful, it really shows the, the beauty of the stones. We also have, don't forget these little tiny components, the little bezel set, um, the little bezel set stones. And we have them bezel set in sterling and in vermeil, the 22 karat gold over silver vermeil. And they come in a variety of different stones, right? So here's a few of those. And that one um, would be, those would be really perfect um, for this style right here, right? So pretty. I like those a lot. So those would make that up really, really nicely, okay? 
So let's start, friends, at the beginning with just something super simple. Um, we also have some of these I want to get out. We still have a few of these on the website. We'll reorder these. These are things that we can still get. It's the Hill Tribe Silver, this really fat donut right here, right? That has a nice big hole. These really will go nicely with those pieces as well. We have some in stock right now, um, but we'll get more if they run out, okay? Um, so let me grab a pearl. Let me grab a length of cord and a pearl. I'm just looking at all my little bits and bobs here, deciding what I'm going to use. All right. Uh, let me get this. Let me get me up here. All right. So I'm just going to get some cord. Maybe I should use, I'm going to use distressed denim. No, distressed gray, I think is what this is. This one's a little bit darker than usual, but distressed gray is, is the, uh, is the color for this. And I'm uh, going to say this is 1.5 millimeter. Let me check. 1.5. That's it. Okay. Um, yeah, these are the Kite Briolettes, Marsha. And the, the hole in these goes across this way. I'll get a wire and show you how these go, but super, super nice. Um, okay, so I'm just going to reel off a yard of this. Here's a yard. And I need a yard uh, so I can tie all these knots and stuff. Okay, so here's the yard. Let me cut this off. All right, let's just do the simplest of simples, simple ones, which is <clears throat> a bead in the center with a knot and then the sliding adjustable. Let me get another little paper here and let me move this up just a hair. There we go. And let me get a little bowl for all of these guys. Bear with me here just a moment while I tidy all of this up. Yeah, Distress Gray, Christine, is my favorite color of, um, of leather cord as well. I just love it. There we go. All right, I'm going to put this kind of right here like that and this like here. Okay, that's not bad. All right, so I'm going to find the center. I'm going to grab a pearl. Maybe I'll dig through and find a pearl that I really like, which is, that's a nice one. You can kind of lay them out and decide, pick and choose. This is a really good one. See how that's kind of, kind of has some texture on the top, which I like, and I like the size of that one. So I'm going to slide this guy right on. Okay. There we go. Slide it to the center. All right. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to make this knot. I'm going to make a loop and I'm going to go through once and I'm going to go through twice. That's it. I'm going to let that leather, see how it kind of naturally wants to fall into kind of a figure eight right there. and tighten it up, okay? Just like that. And that double overhand knot really makes it, um, really makes it very easy. Uh, it's an easy knot to tie and it's large enough so that the bead doesn't fall over the knot, okay? And I'm gonna do the same to the other side. So there's the collection. Um, Drea is making a collection, a Shop the Show collection. So you have it, right? Drea is beadshop.com. She's on as beadshop.com. 
<clears throat> and <clears throat> pardon me, she's going to keep that collection updated with what I'm going to use on the show. And it's also going to be pinned to the top of the chat. So it's there. Okay. Um, Terry, don't stress about knotting leather. You know, you have, you probably have some little bits of leather hanging around in your stash. Just give yourself a little bit of practice, right? Especially when you don't know what it is that you want to make. Um, go ahead and just do some practice knots, right? Um, here, I'm going to do this on the other side. I'm going to push the pearl over like that. I'm going to make my loop, my overhand loop right here. And I'm going to go through once. <clears throat> I'm going to go through twice. Now, the trick to this is if it doesn't want to turn into that figure eight, kind of turn it so you've got that infinity symbol. Okay. Now, I'm going to push this loop of the figure eight towards the pearl. See that? I'm pulling, pulling and pushing all at the same time. And I just walk it up. And it doesn't have to be super tight. Right? That's all she wrote. That's it. Right? That's it. Done. Now, let's use that Hill Tribe Silver since I pulled it out. Right? Let's do that. What could be easier? Let's put that Hill Tribe Silver right there on that side. This on this side. Now, you know me. I, once I, it does, it's so clean, right? Once I get going, right? Now, here come the ideas. Here come the ideas right here. I think I'm going to leave this just plain like so, so we're not worried about um, uh, about this uh, doing a knot here at the top to maybe distract from the beauty of this Hill Tribe Silver. Let's just leave it, okay? So now I'm going to bring this around, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually let me take it out of the of the shot here. Um, so here, here's my piece, right? So I know that I need to make it large enough so that it goes over my head like this, right? So let me measure how long that is. 18, 19, 20, 20, 21 inches about. So usually about 20, 21 to 22 inches. Sorry, now my hair is all freaking out. There we go. So I'm going to hold it there <clears throat> where it goes, right? And now I'm going to tie the knot and I'm going to show you that on the, the down camera. Okay. Yeah. Where does that headband? Right. Just like this. Wear it on my head. I love to put things on my head. Uh, okay. So let me show you here. Let me zoom in. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to tie the knot with my right hand. Okay. Now, essentially what you're tying here is the same knot that you tied here, right? It's the it's the double overhand, but you're tying it with this leg of leather around this leg of leather. So I'm going to go around once and twice. See that? So I've gone, so my little loops are standing up here like this. Now with the end of my leather cord right here, I'm going to slide it down through those two archways down towards the pearl, right? This way, okay? This leather is 1.5, and that's my default for all of this. I use the 1.5 for most of this. If it kind of capsizes over itself, just pull it. There we go, because this is what you want to see. You want to see that little... X. Let me zoom in on it so it's not. 
There we go. Can you see how the leather is a little X there and it's doubled over? Now I'm going to turn it around <clears throat> and I'm going to do this again. I also want to make sure, let me show you this real quick. Um, I want to make sure that this is in the center right here. Okay. So when I grab it, I'm going to grab it right here so it's even. And this is in the center. Okay. If that makes sense. Whoops. One of my, one of my, um, <laughs> can you see that in all of this? I lost <laughs> one of my little tribe silver pieces. <laughs> really? Hang on. I, I'll, uh, let me solo this again. Let me zoom out. I'll untie it. So Terry, no fear, right? I just have to untie it. I think I've got another hill tribe silver. I hope so. Here somewhere. I didn't even feel that drop off. Let me see. I do. I've got I've got another one. Hopefully I can find it later. That's why you always get multiples. Oh, here it is. No, that's a different silver bean on the floor. Oh well, I'll find it. <laughs> Isn't that how it always is? All right. So let me just un untie this, All right? So I'm going to just untie it out. It's a good thing I checked it. I was like, something looks funny there. There we go. Let me get it. I want to find it because those little beads, those little dudes are not cheap, I'll tell you. Put this back on. Find my center. Right, here we go. Tie this knot again. I'm going to do it a little like this. Go through to the center. Tie it tightly like that. Okay, both beads, check that both are on there. They are. Turn it. Now, this is where I was before I lost that bead. My beads are in the center right here. My where I'm going to tie the knot is right here. Let me zoom in. Okay. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go around once, go around twice. And I go to the right. This one's here. Then I do my second loop to the right of that first loop. Now I take that end and I send it through both of those loops. There's the knot and I tighten it up. Okay. Now, <clears throat> sheer will is really what holds this stuff together. Okay. That's really it. I don't use any glue because the glue will, <clears throat> will not, will glue this knot to this leather. Okay. So I'm going to show you how I finish this off. I'm going to grab, um, you can grab your pliers if you want. You need to be kind of careful when you're pulling this leather. The leather is a good quality, but again, you don't want to yank on it so much that you break it. But sometimes I need a little help tugging the leather. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to get any flat nose. This happens to be my, um, my chain nose. And <clears throat> yeah, the leather, uh, that's a good question. The leather that I'm looping with, this is the leather that I'm looping around. So that's on the bottom and the leather that I'm looping with is usually on the top. So I'll go around here once like that, twice like that, and then send it through like that. Okay. So I'm going to tighten this up. <clears throat> this loosens up over time. So I'm just going to be really careful as I'm pulling that, pulling that tight and I'm right-handed. So I tied all of that with my right hand. This one, you'll see if it looks funny, it means that the, that the knot kind of capsized over itself. So I want to pull that little, there we go. See, that looks right. See how that's an X right there now. That's good. And I'm going <clears> to, <throat> Pull that leather tight, like so. 
pull that knot, kind of pull on it back and forth with your fingers until everything tightens up, okay? Now, the other thing, when you're sliding this knot closed, you don't want to slide it so that your knots touch together, okay? Once your knots touch together, it's hard to get your fingers in to pull it out, right? So you just want to, when you tighten it, make sure that there's like a finger's width in between your knots, all right? Now, what I'm going to do here, you could just knot it or clip it off here, but I always give it just a single overhand here, like this. And then I'll cut it. I like to use my wire cutters to just clip. Those are our maxi shear from Zuron, US made right in Maine. Really great company, really great pliers. I'll come in here, give that a little tug like that and clip and I'll clip off at an angle. All right, so here we have let me zoom out. We've got our really simple, that zoomed out a little too far. There we go. A really nice and simple um, piece like that. Okay, and you can see how nice that looks right there. Really pretty. So then I can put this on. If it's here, I'll slide it so it's open as large as it can go. Take off my glasses leaving a little bit of space in between so I can pull it. And then sometimes what I do with that sliding adjustable, I pull it to the front and then I pull it around this way. And then I pull everything here. I mean, look at that. I'm going to wear this all through Tucson. That's it. It's my new necklace. I'm never taking this off except to show you again. Right. But look, isn't that just easy breezy, gorgeous. 1.5 millimeter is the size. Then when you're ready to take it off, you can, Slide it to the front. Make sure that those two don't touch. Let me take off my earrings and slide it off, right? This is the best. Put it in a gift bag. You're ready to go with gifts, right? So simple. That took no time at all, right? So let's do, let me look at our, our banners again. Let's take a look at our photos. Uh, and see, let's take a look at this closure, shall we? This knotted closure, because we're continuing. This is really very similar. Okay. So let me show you this. And I've got an idea here. Um, oh, Landa, thank you so much. You know, Drea said she's all just do something super simple. Don't be too crazy. Right. And I was all, oh, okay. <laughs> Smart. So yes, and it will, it will go with everything. Yeah. You all have Drea to thank for this. Cause I don't know what I was going to do. Some kind of crazy business, but keep it simple. It's beautiful. Uh, all right. Let me go back to this right here and let me show you what we're going to do next. So I have the swivel clasp for you, which I love. Here's the, the swivel right here. And if you don't know the swivel like this, get to know it. It's nice. Right. And it's really, really, um, it's heavy duty. I use it all the time. That's the, the brass. We also have it, I think in the antique silver is what Drea put up on the homepage, but it's a really beautiful a beautiful one. Uh, it's really true. Uh, Jody's saying that these make amazing gifts. So true. And it's true. My mom had to learn that knot <clears throat> when I had my store on the mission in San Francisco. I'll tell you, people would come in the bead store, they would pick one bead and they'd want to wear it right away. So that's what we do. We do this necklace all, all day long. It's great. And especially if you do like fairs or shows, or you, um, you know, you're selling or whatever in market at market stalls or whatever. This is, this is a great, a really, really great, fast, easy piece.
piece to um, to sell. So I'm going to get this leaf and loop toggle clasp. Okay. Now a lot of times these toggle clasps we wear our clasps on the back. This one we're going to wear in the front. And let me show you how we're going to do this. We're going to use those large pearls again. I'm going to cut another yard. I think someone asked me uh, in the chat a while back, what's the rule of thumb or how do you measure? You know, even if I'm just doing like a shorter necklace, um, I think a yard is a good way to go because then you'll have enough to um, tie as many knots as you want, you know. Um, I think that works out pretty well. So there's my yard. Now, what I'm also going to use, since we really loved these kite brios, and I, I do love the kite briolette, um, and I said I was just going to use pearls and leather, right? But I am going to add in this kite briolette. We've got them in a myriad of colors. We've got it in this green, um, the green onyx. We have it in the purple amethyst, the carnelian. Look at this, lapis, dyed howlite, and your friend and mine, Labradorite, which is just gorgeous, right? I think I'm going to add a little bit of Labradorite to this. So let me get rid of these stones. <clears throat> now, what I recommend if you're using a wire for this, and you will because, you know, you want to wire wrap it to get it on there, we're going to need a 26 gauge. Um, so... Let me get a 26 gauge wire here. We used to teach a class um, in this kind of stuff when we had our brick and mortar and we called it um, Sundance Necklace, right? And we would make all kinds of super simple, really fun things. Um, just in the style of everyone's favorite catalog, the Sundance catalog, right? So we had a lot of fun with it. Um, and, you know, just gaining some inspiration from these really great jewelry designers. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to make their own jewelry. So more power to them. Buy your jewelry, wear it, have that, have a great time. But if you do like to make it, um, if you really like to make it, um, these super simple little, little necklaces are so satisfying, right? Simple is so satisfying. So let me wire wrap this kite briolette first. And I also want my jump ring. I want the nun, if I say it out loud, hopefully it'll come to me. I want the nun design, um, uh, jump ring that has the little lines on it. Um, I had my jump rings here like a minute ago. There they are. <clears throat> Our textured jump rings that we carry um, are really fun to, to work with. We've got these little rope ones like this. We've got the, these rope ones here. We have a myriad of different ones. Um, I would go ahead and grab some just for your collection so you have them when you want them. Uh, those all look good, I think. I also like that really little, um, oh yeah, this twist. That one's a good one. Just go in and look at our jump rings and just choose the ones that speak to you um, texture wise or size wise. It's good to have a little variety. That's the one that I wanted right there. Okay. So let me show you. <clears throat> All right. So many jump rings, so little time. Okay. 
let me get this is our mini rope jump ring right here those yeah this labradorite does have a lot of uh a lot of shine it's a really nice one they're really nice uh can you hear me now did i did my um did my audio fall out can you still hear me okay now i'm back okay i'm not sure what happened there um let me go ahead and figure out what metal goes in it or what gauge i have 26 and 24 so let me see what fits okay all right <clears throat> And then let's see if this, see that 24 gauge, it's a little too heavy. Now it works, but see how the kite briolettes, sorry, I was out of frame there. See how the kite briolettes, they're drilled really high up like this, like this here. So um, you really wanna make sure that it fits nicely and there's room on it. I think I can get away with this 24 gauge, so that's what I'm gonna use. But you can also, if you're really worried, you can go down to the 26 gauge. It just depends on what you like. And we need to be careful because the kite briolettes, like I said, they're drilled up close to the top. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna cut this is one, two, three. This is about four inches of wire that I've got here. So I'm going to cut that away. Let me get this. Let me move this back. Let me move this camera forward just a little bit. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> and I'm just going to come in and do like our regular briolette wrap that we do with this. This is our Parawire craft wire in the titanium, right? Um, I like this titanium color. You can use whatever you like, but I'm gonna come in. We've got the tutorial on how to wire wrap a briolette. We've got that on our skill builders on beadshop.com. We wanna make sure that there's enough room here because we don't wanna crack that brio. So I'm not gonna go over the step by step of the briolette wrapping uh, because it is in our skill builders, but I'm going to make a nice small loop there, come around, and now, whoops, sorry, I'm out of frame. I'm going to wrap there, that little neck. Okay, And I can keep going down as long as I you know, as far down as I want it to be. So let's do this. And remember, the wire isn't forgiving like thread, right? It's stiff, so it's not going to yield for the, um, you know, like thread would. So I'm going to come back in. I'm going to clip this extra away, being careful only to clip that little extra wire there. And that extra wire there, okay? <clears throat> okay, let me go back down here like this. And let me zoom in so you can really see it. There we go, okay? So there's that. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna tighten this up just a little, make sure that any little bits of wire or whatever are tucked in using a light touch. And now I'm going to add it onto this jump ring. So let me open that up. I need my other chain nose. Slide that on. Close it up. And that's ready to go. So I'm going to, I'm just going to put that to the side for the moment. So there's a really great component part there. Okay. Let me adjust the, so you can really see it. That's better. That's a little clearer. Okay. 
right there. Now, I've got my yard of leather here. Let me zoom out a little so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. I'm going to put, isn't it cute? It's a great little component, isn't it? I just love it. This would also look great on an earring, you know, whatever, whatever works. You get this wire out of the way. So now uh, I've got this end right here, the end of this, of this wire, or this uh, cord. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knot this uh, loop part of the toggle. I'm just going to knot it on my cord here. Uh, question, do I need to work hard in the pair of wire? You don't. Um, the wire wrapping itself work hardens it quite a bit when you're using it. And it is heavy enough gauge with this 24 or even 26 that it's going to be fine. Okay, it's going to be fine. And that's just how I do it, Julie. Um, I like to make a variety of little components to add later, like I'll do, like if I'm not sure what I'm designing with, I'll just make a whole bunch of little components, just a bunch of little stuff. And then I can pick and choose what I want, right? For sure, that's a great way of doing it. So here, here's my piece here, my, my loop I've gone through. This is about, maybe I'll have about a three inch overhang here like this. And I'm gonna tie that, double overhand knot like I did that slider knot, right? Same thing, right? I tie it on there and then I just slide it up towards the clasp. Right, so what we've got right here looks like that. Okay. So now I'm going to work with this side. I'm not going to cut this off yet. Okay. I'm going to tie a double overhand here. I'm going to go through once. Now this is where it starts to get a little more barrel knotty. Okay. I don't know if that's the right way of saying it, but let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see this a little closer. Instead of going through the knot, or through the loop twice, once, twice. I'm going to go through three times. Let me put it down so you can see it. So see how I've gone through once, twice, three times here. Okay. Now I'm going to tighten that knot up just like, whoops, sorry, just like I did, um, just like I did right here with this knot. So let me pull it into that figure eight like that, see? And I push the right-hand side of the figure eight towards the left-hand side of the figure eight. Just go slowly, let your knot form. And see here, you've got three little, little knots, three little loops. There we go. And that wants to sit right there. Yes. See there. Now I'm going to tighten that up a little bit more. <clears throat> so I've got a little bit of a larger knot there. Now I'm going to put on a pearl. Okay, just like that. This is a little, it's bugging me. It's not sitting exactly where I want it. So again, if it's not exactly right, undo it, loosen it just a little. Place the knot. There we go. That wants to be right, right there. Bear with me here just a second while I make sure it's right. Because I'll see it. I know no one else will see it. I know. 
my friends, but you know how it is. You get there and you're like, oh, this just isn't quite it. There we go. Push those towards each other. Work that right down. I'm going to take it out one more time. I too stumble. It's all right. doesn't matter. Because you want it to be. This knot's going to be there forever, right? Or at least close to forever. So I want it to look exactly right. I'm going to, I want to make this loop a little bit bigger. It's a little too small to re-knot it nicely. So let me walk that back down. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, nice big loop. Tighten it up into that figure eight and push them together. There we go. Shoo, that is perfect. Nothing's crossing where it shouldn't be crossing. There we go. Okay. All right. So now I bring this down and we're going to do the other side. Let me get rid of these beads. And I'm going to do that three. One, two, and three. Okay. Pull it into that figure eight and push it down. And I'm kind of slowing this down for the camera. So usually I go a little bit faster. Sometimes when you slow things down, I get into trouble, but there it is. See, there's my three and I just tighten it up. There we go. That one went a lot better. Okay. So see how I've got a larger knot there. So I've got this coming. So let's take a look at where we want it to uh, to sit. So if I want this toggle in the front for me, right? Here we go. There's the, the pearl on its own. Maybe I want just a single pearl, right? It's kind of off center. It's kind of cool. I like that. I don't need anything on this other side, right? I could put one on if I wanted to be symmetrical. Um, Let's take a look and see what that looks like. I don't like to make things too symmetrical, right? So here's this. Let me slide out a little bit. <clears throat> there we go. Um, I could put two, but I feel like two is going to overpower that toggle, right? I feel like one is it. And then I still have this kite brio that I think I'm going to dangle it. I think I'm going to dangle off of this loop, right? So yeah, this is really similar. It's like the barrel knot just going around and around, but I'm not using a tool, right? So I call this the double or triple overhand, something like that. That's what I do. Okay, so I'm going to come here. Yeah, and this side, size knot, I think does complement the pearl side, the pearl size, right? So I want to make this lengthwise. Let me just put it around my neck real quick. I want it to be about right here. Okay, <clears throat> so I know that my knot, my toggle needs to sit right here. Okay, so this with the toggle is going to be about 18 inches for me. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to put the, the toggle bar, in this case it's this leaf bar, I'm going to measure it so that I know that this is coming into 17 inches which it is right there. 
<clears throat> now I'm going to do that double overhand again, or that sliding adjustable rather, right? Go over once, go over twice, down into the loops, and tighten this up. And I want to tighten it from the loose end. I don't want to add any length to the necklace. And, and can you see I actually missed going around, so I need to retie that. I need to capture this cord in everything. <clears throat> so let me go around. There's once. And there's twice. And I need to go through both of those. There we go. <clears throat> now we'll tighten. Yeah, and I caught both of them that time. Slide it up. Now this is a knot that I glue. Okay, and I'll show you how I do it. I'm going to tighten this up really well. Because we don't want these slide these knots to slide or adjust. Right? So I'm gonna tighten it there. I'm gonna tighten it there. Does that look right? It doesn't look right to me. I'm gonna tie it one more time. I don't know what the issue is. Bear with me. If we're going to do it, we're going to do it right, right? <clears throat> Let me make sure I'm still at the right length. I am. There we go. All right, that. That is correct. Slide that up and tighten it down. You know, you just know when it's not right. Right? So here's my 17, just checking the length. It's correct. So here are my two knots, my two closure knots right here. Let's go ahead and add our glue. Let me get a little tighter in there so you can see it. Okay. I'm going to get the GS Hypo for this because I can fit the needle of the GS Hypo right into the knot. So I'm going to come in with my GS, take my little, oh, the lid fell on the floor along with that Hill Tribe, <laughs> that Hill Tribe piece, right? Uh, I need a little paper towel here. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to get the tip of that GS right inside that knot right there. And I'm going to extrude a little bit of glue right inside of it. And then I'm going to tighten it one more time. And that tightening over the top of the glue is going to really hold things together. Let me do this again. I go in right from the bottom of that knot, go right underneath it. See if you can get it right in there. There we go. Extrude a little bit of glue. Pull it out. Clean off the tip of your glue. There we go. And usually after I get the pin back in, I clear off the tip again. I'm going to store it top up, pointing up, not flat. Then I'm going to come in, tighten this again so it's tightened over that glue. Now if this weren't demo time, I would just go ahead and let this sit. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and Clip it real close because that glue is going to hold it. 
make sure I clip the right one. Oy. Right. So here, what I have. And oh, Diane, thank you. Those are nice words. I do. You know, I know that sometimes people when they're doing their lives, they get kind of flustered and they say, oh, I'm just going to let it go. But, you know, I want you to really see it how it's supposed to look. So many times I'll take the time to try and fix it. So I appreciate you that you appreciate that. Thank you. So here's this, right? It's going to sit there. Now, if Amy has a question, will these necklaces stay in place or will they work themselves around your neck? I think they'll stay. I'm going to test it. Let's, I'm going to put them on. I'll wear them, right? I can also come in. Maybe I'll put this on this side of it. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Sherry, I love that you're coming to shop my floor. It's really, it's pretty bad. There are quite a few beads. The detritus of years. But I, I get them. I pick them up. So now I'm going to go back and forth, work hard in this jump ring a little bit like that. I'm going to slide this on the cord. Slide it so it's nice and closed. You could also, friends, if this were a soldered ring, you could put this on a soldered ring if you want. Sorry, that is blurry. Let me fix it. Uh, it could be on a soldered ring, but you'd want to put the soldered ring on, obviously, before you tie this knot. So what I have here hmm, is this one. And that one, look at how nice those two look. Okay, they really look good. I like them a lot. Um, can I share my rolling cart? Yes, Jamie, I will show you my rolling cart at the end of the broadcast. It's a mess, so you have to uh, uh, you have to forgive me on that. Uh, let's do um, let's do one more thing just real quick. I was on a little late, so I've got a little bit more time here. Let's do a third something. Um, let me get these loose ones. Let me get, and I'm going to go fast. I'm going to go at Kate speed for this because, whoops, because I really, uh, really want to show you this. I'm going to get a yard here of this and uh, let me cut it here and I'm going to get like a bead or something for the end. I was going to use a shadow bead for this. This is, I think this is the king size shadow that's right here that I've got. So I'm going to bring this around like this and I'm going to very quickly silk wrap that sucker and I'm going to silk wrap it using um, wax linen. And I know I've got some wax linen sitting here somewhere. So give me one moment, please. But you could, you could silk wrap it with anything, but I really want wax linen. Here it is right here. This is the, I don't know, lighter brown or chocolate or whatever, but I don't mind the the color. Okay. So I'm going to come in. I was hoping for a silver uh, king size shadow, but I think I only have them in brass here. And that's fine. You know me. I love the brass beads and I do not mind mixing my metals. So we're just going to go with that. Let me get rid of this stuff. All right. So let me show you this. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> All right, here's my piece of Irish wax linen. Again, our silk wrapping demo, or our, our skill builder, is on our website. 
you've seen me do this many, many times. You can do this with however, whatever material, whatever bead has a large enough hole. But I'm going to silk wrap a neck that's fairly long, right? And that's going to kind of form the neck of the toggle. This is going to kind of be a loop and toggle, but the toggle portion will be this king size shadow bead right here. And the loop is just going to be a loop of leather. So here's this. Go through and pull this down. There we go. There's nothing like silk wrapping with the Irish wax linen. Pull on both. And this is it. So I'm going to clip away this extra. I could shove a little bit of glue, shove being the operative word, like I did under that knot. But especially with the Irish wax linen, things don't need to be don't need to be glued. So there's the closure. All right. So now let me string like I mean it. I'm going to put on one, two, three, four, five, come back here, six, again, 1.5 leather, seven, Eight. Let's see how those look. Okay, that's about right. All right, I'm going to do this face forward for you. What I'm going to do here, the way I do this a lot, is I just bring my first pearl down and I'm just going to make my loop and tie it, right? That's just an overhand knot. So here's my next one right here. So maybe I'll do two right together. I can silk wrap with 0.5 leather for sure, Andy. I test it to make sure that it's good. But see here, here how I'm going here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to show off a little bit. And my friend, how are you and your beautiful enamels? Are you going to be in Tucson? We need to collab sometime, I think. If you don't know Anne's beautiful pieces from um, her enameled pieces, they're just gorgeous. I have some in my collection. <clears throat> so see here, I'm just going through. This is just an overhand knot that I'm doing. I'm going at Kate's speed because I need to do this fast. So here are eight. Let me show you that length. That's about five inches right here, right? So here's this. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go up a little bit here, tie a knot like that. Give myself a little bit of empty space there. And just for fun, for a little bit of a design you know, fun design element. I'm going to put on three pearls. Next, one, and two. Oh, you're not going to be in Tucson. Well, next year. Oh, I'm sorry you missed out on the boxes. But, you know, if you did miss out on our Tucson boxes, my friends, um, you can shop my live sales. The live sales are going to be so much fun. We're doing another live sale tomorrow to practice. And a big thank you to all of you who came to my practice live sale yesterday. We're getting it down. 
Um, we're going to do another practice run tomorrow. The details are going to be in the newsletter. Um, so by the time I get to Tucson, I'm going to be an old hand at these live broadcasts. And yeah, I'm going to look for things. I'm going to buy them that day and sell them to you that afternoon or evening. Uh, it's going to be fun. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. I'm going to put on like, let me put on five more and see what that looks like. One. Two, and you can kind of pick and choose. That last one was a little too organic for the front. I might put it in the back, but one, two, three, four, five. Let's not these five. So see, I've got a little bit of space there, but I'm okay with that. I'll I'll show you. Okay, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Uh tomorrow it'll be at 10:30 a.m. Pacific. I'm making some mystery bags to sell to you because we basically want to test how the going live and putting everything in and selling live and shipping, how all of that works. Cause I've got to get all those kinks worked out before I actually sell to you in Tucson. Oh, see, look, we're super close. I'm going to go maybe three more. And then let's close it up and I'll show you the closure. Oh yeah, we're doing okay. Oh good, so Kaliti is saying it's been raining for the last three days in Tucson. Should be clearing up now. 60s and 70s for the first bead show weekend. Girl, I am so there for that. It's going to be beautiful. I've been, you know, in all of the years I've been going to Tucson since 1990 two or 93, I think. And I have seen all sorts of weather. I have seen tents blown away by hurricane force winds. I have seen it be super hot. I have seen it be 19 degrees and snowing. It's crazy, but I love it when it's like totally balmy. That's my favorite. Um, Bonnie's asking, do uh, well, I have a regular time for your lives in Tucson. I won't. I'm not really sure what times I'm going to be going live, but I will decide the day before and they'll be in the newsletter. And we'll also probably post them on the homepage as well with a link. Yeah, there we go. This is what I want it to be um, with a link so that uh, so that you'll know. Okay. So you'll know what's going on. All right. So I've got a little bit of space so I can wear this like however I want, right? It's got a little bit of space in the pearls and stuff like that. And I'm going to layer this anyway, but you don't have to have this space. But I just thought it might kind of be interesting to put a little bit of space there. Let me put it back to the overhead camera. And let's close this off. So <clears throat> I'm going to put one more pearl right here. And then I'll tell you the finished dimensions and I'll tell you how many pearls I've used. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. So if you want to do something like this, I would get, because on the pearls, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, there are about 16 pearls per strand right? So if you want to do something like this, um, and then the other things, I'd get yourself two strands of these. Okay. Um, all right. So now I'm going to create the loop on this side. That's going to go right here. Okay. So I need to kind of visually measure it to see how it's going to sit there. And I'm going to silk wrap right here. So let me cut another piece of wax linen. I like the sphinx too. And then I could add like a charm here if I wanted, or I could do some more like silk wrapping or something. I don't know, you know, but I think the space is interesting. Um, you know, you can, and you could also make it into a float so that you don't have things that are 
um, you know, that are right together. So don't be afraid, you know, and if you don't love this, it doesn't matter. Do it in your own way. If I didn't love it, it also doesn't matter. I can just cut it up and redo it, right? Let's make that loop just a little bit smaller. Now I haven't measured this, so we'll see how it comes, okay? I'm going to silk wrap from the top of this pearl. It's easier for me to get close to the pearl that way. And it's also easier if I wrap towards the loop to figure out what size of loop I need to leave. Okay, so I'm going to check it. I think I need it to be, it's almost right. You want it to be big enough so that that bead slides in and out, but not so big or so small that it falls out or that you have to force it. I think that's right. So I'm going to pull the end through that loop, pull this back, pull that in. Underneath what's happening underneath my finger is that little connection is going in underneath that silk wrap. Pull on both. If you're having trouble pulling, like that piece of, I wish Watts one is a little small. So I'm going to pull them both. <clears throat> I'm going to clip and clip and clip. So now the collection that we have the necklace suite, if you will. Where are my other two? Um, I'll zoom out so we can see all of these together. The pearls are really pretty. I really love them. Um, you know, I'm not super thrilled with this kite briolette where I put it here. Maybe I'd put it here or put it here. For the moment, I'm going to take it off. I'm not going to decide quite yet. It was almost correct. Let's see if I can find where that loop is. I could also hang it. That I could also hang there in the space right there too. But I, I'm not going to force it quite yet. But this is going to go right here. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see that pile, that neck mess, as they say. And the pearls are limited, so I would do some shopping today if you haven't already. They just went in yesterday. We had a good amount, but you folks are starting to buy them up, so thank you for that. But look at, now's the time to take a screenshot. Let me just center it here. Now screenshot time for you. Let me get my hand out of the way. There we go. Looks pretty, right? I like it. Let me put it on and let's see how it looks. Yeah, I might hang it on the clasp. We'll see. I think hanging it on the loop of this clasp would work out well. So here's that one right here. Okay. So there's there's that one with the um with the leaf toggle. And that leaf toggle can just sit right in the front, right? Looks nice, just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to slide this open. So I will be in Tucson. I'm leaving for Tucson on, pardon me, on Friday. So no uh, Friday, broad, the Friday broadcast is going to be um, pre-recorded because I have a, a Tucson kickoff item that's dropping on Friday that I think you folks are going to love. So the broadcast will be pre-recorded. See, look at that. Here's the second one. Uh, this way, right? So look, layering, right? How cute is that? 
Now let me do this third one. And then I'll be there till the following Saturday. So I'll be around. So if you're around, hit me up. Send me a message. You can message me on social. Right? Look at, that's the PS de resistance. Look at how good that looks. If I do say so myself. I love, love, love the layers. Right? Looks great. So if you're in Tucson, friends, hit me up. I'll be around. Um, the live broadcasts, we are going to, I really, I'm just totally in love with it. I'm looking at it like I can't stop. Maybe this kite brio on an earring. I know what I'm going to do. Look, look, look it. I know we were talking about Tucson, but see, let's put this kite brio. I'm going to put it right on. We got these 20 millimeter hoops back in. All the hoops are back in. I'm going to put it in my ear. Here we go. Come on now. Get out of Dodge. That's pretty cute. I'll do another one for the other earring. I don't know where the other hoop went. I had it here a second ago. But anyway, I'll be a pirate. I just have one for now. But look at how cute. This is the, the 20 millimeter. Um, yeah, there's so many shows. Someone's saying, Renee, this is your first Tucson trip. Let me give you a piece of advice for Tucson is um, when you go, go and grab the Tucson show guide, right? The show guide has all the shows in it. You can kind of read about the different shows and stuff like that, figure it out. There by the 10, you know, there's all the motels that are there off the 10. Those motels, they have a bunch of gem shows there. I love looking at those little shows. You find stuff that you never find, that you never see. I'm telling you my secrets. I don't know why I'm telling you. But that's the way to do it, right? It's really great. Um, so, but get that Tucson show guide. That's your Bible for the whole, whole trip. Um, that's the way to do it, okay? Uh, so next Wednesday, um, well, we're going to have, I'm going to do some live broadcastings, uh, broadcasts, right? So there isn't going to be a uh, live broadcast per se, but I'll be hopping in. Stay tuned to the newsletter. Drea and I are going to figure this all out. I also have to figure out um, like which days and stuff. So I'll have that all done. The 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 broadcast schedule will be in the newsletter Um so stay tuned for that. If you're not uh, signed up for our bead shop newsletter, go over to beadshop.com, get on that newsletter list. So you'll see it. Uh, let me just make sure that I've, yes, this is exactly right. Water, nasal spray, eye drops, and moisturizer. We learned about nasal spray the hard way, right, JP? <laughs> right? Oh, Drea, I so lied. I knew that we did. <laughs> Drea, we do have a pre-recorded show. Drea has some, maybe we should just do it live. I don't know, but it's going to be, Drea has some earrings for next Wednesday. I forgot about that, my friends. Uh, I didn't really forget about it, but I guess I did. She has some earrings you're not going to want to miss. So next week is going to be full of broadcasts, live, not live, earrings, live sales, whatever. It's all going to be there. All right. Um, okay, my friends, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, for joining me today. Sorry, I was a little late and you know, whatever it's Tucson prep time. My head's on fire. <laughs> Do remember that you can find us all over the web, Facebook, Pinterest, Insta, hit that like, and subscribe button over on YouTube. Any questions? shoot us an email over at info at beadshop.com. You can find us and tag us all over the web at beadshop.com and stay tuned for tomorrow's live show, uh, live sales show, another practice run starting at 1030 AM Pacific. It'll be right on the place to be is right on our um, bead shop website. That's where we broadcast live. So you can purchase. I will see you tomorrow pre recorded broadcast on Friday and next week from Tucson. Thanks friends so much for joining me and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Have fun nodding. <laughs>